planting, tilling, harvesting. Migrant farmers know what it means to work hard. But when the ultra-driven son of immigrant laborers traded crop sowing for car sales, he planted the seeds of one impressive automotive dynasty. Now the only thing he watches grow is his net worth. Meet Jay Gill. Let's go in here and look at some numbers. All right. I'm Jay Gill, and I sell cars, and I make millions doing it. Step in here, see how you feel. I'm president and CEO of Gill Automotive Group, one of the fastest growing automotive dealerships in California. Automotive Group? More like Automotive Empire. We're talking six dealerships, 11 brands, over 250 employees, and in 2014, more than $150 million in sales. I think when I started in the car business, I was surprised I was making that much money. I didn't think I would ever make that kind of money. Not surprising. Nine-digit sales figures aren't really in the cards when you grow up like Jay, desperately poor. We came to this country in 1973. Growing up, my parents were immigrant farm workers. You know, we basically lived in employer-provided housing, and it wasn't the best of places to, to grow up. I would go out picking cotton. Most kids looked forward to summers. I did not look forward to summers because we had to work. I looked forward to going back to school. Anxious for the better life his parents dreamed of, Jay worked his butt off to get into college, and it was there his entrepreneurial spirit got its jump start. Students that were, for the semester, going back home, they would put an ad out for their cars. So I'd go and buy a car here and there. Since I was from a lot of the farming community, I'd bring that car back and i sell it, and i make some money on it. So this was my first used car operation that I started back in 1996. I think I bought about 20 cars, about $3,000 a piece. So we started with about $60,000 worth of inventory. Alpha Motors was open for business, and guys like Jay don't hire others for work they can do themselves. The sales department, that was Jay. Maintenance, Jay too. Marketing, guess who? I made a lot of mistakes, but you know, I befriended people in the finance business. I would actually ask them how to structure deals. And I learned that, hey, there's some good money to be made and I stuck with it. So in 1997, I opened up my second used car lot and within a few years, we were doing about a million dollars in, in revenue. And while seven-figure sales allowed Jay to leave those Fresno cotton fields in the dust, he still had something to prove. Nobody really has any respect for used car dealers, so my thing was, hey, I want to become a new car dealer because as a foreigner coming into this country, it was so difficult trying to get respect, so I was going to do something about that. In the early 2000s, you know, somebody came to me and said, hey, there's a new car franchise available, but the dealership had been losing money for years and years. Where most people saw failure, Jay saw an opportunity to tap into a customer base he knew well. All he had to do was convince a little company called General Motors. In their opinion, the store was not viable. I said, look, I grew up working out on the farms out here, so I knew the farmers, I knew the market. Let me purchase this dealership. If I succeed, then you guys get to put another check mark on your list that you have a minority dealer. If I fail, then it's on me. So they finally agreed to do it, and I couldn't believe that. That was a really great day, very gratifying. We were able to cater to the farmers out here, and within the first six months, we turned the store around. And since Jay could never be content with just one new car dealership, he built another one, and another one, and, oh yeah, a fourth, fifth, and sixth one. How did our month end up last? Real good, we did 85 cars for 320,000. Good. When somebody tells me, hey, we have a 60, 70 car weekend, I mean, that is, gets me pumped up. It means that we're going to have more customers out there. So the more units in operation we have in our market is the more opportunity we have to service those vehicles. And it's probably the most lucrative part of our business because we get to keep 70% of our uh, margins versus maybe 1% or 2% of margins when we're selling cars. Smart move, Jay. New cars only account for 50% of his profits, while used cars, parts, warranties, and service make up the other 50%. All right, Olga, I got some really good news for you. Oh, good. All right. In 19 years, Jay has grown $60,000 of inventory into $150 million in revenue. Pretty incredible. But there's one return on investment even more important to the son of migrant workers, a place his family can finally call holy smokes. Nice digs, Jay. I live with my wife, Ruby, my parents, and my two boys. It has uh, six bedrooms and seven bathrooms. Uh, the house is about 10,000 square feet of covered area. All the detail work that you see was built in our garage. Like all this wood area, they're all handmade right here. Handmade. Handmade right here. The ceiling, it's all handmade. This piece is all handmade here. You know, carpenters, one, they come into your house, they never want to leave, so uh, you can see why. 
Jay's family doesn't want to leave either. Might be the light up onyx countertops, the elevator, wine cellar, gym, sauna, and $100,000 sound system. Jay may be a long way from the farmland of Fresno, but he's never forgotten the two people who made it all possible. My parents, they worked very hard, and I'm very blessed the fact that now I'm able to give back to them. And these days, Jay's dad has gone back to working the fields, only this time, he's the boss. When my dad retired, he needed something to do, so I bought this purely because he loves being out on the farm, and instead of working for somebody all his life, now he gets to run his own farm. We produce about 750,000 pounds of almonds every year, so it makes very good money. As a matter of fact, the return on the almond farming is much better than the car business. <laughs> Take him to the hoop. I think I'm living more than the lifestyle that I deserve. And I definitely feel like I am living the American dream, and I think a lot of people think the American dream is not accomplishable anymore, but if I can come from a foreign country, work hard, and build a $150 million company, they can do it too. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, I'm pretty good for an old man.